orthopedic blast injuries. This is from the Orthopedic Trauma Association Core Curriculum Resident Lecture Series prepared by uh, the following authors from the OTA Disaster Preparedness Committee, Drs. Bourne, McAndrew, Mamzak, Pagankoff, Richardson, Teague, and Wolinsky. Uh, I'm Saqib Rahman. I'll be narrating the slides. So the objectives of this uh, lecture are to recognize the increasing threat of blast injuries, understand basic blast wave mechanics, understand blast wave wounding mechanisms, and describe the initial management of blast wave injuries. Let's first talk about the threat and why this is important for the orthopedic surgeon. Well, first, let's try to define what is a blast wave injury. Um, well, a blast forms when solid or liquid fuel is rapidly converted into its gaseous state. Um, resulting detonations can produce injuries that are rarely seen outside of combat. Uh, we'll talk about some of the scenarios where you do see it, but this is not your everyday civilian uh, trauma uh, that you see at our trauma centers. Uh, severe multi-system injuries are common. Uh, mass casualties are common. Uh, and unfortunately, in some civilian centers, uh, these are seen, um, as, as we'll discuss. So sources of blast injury include uh, accidental um, injuries, such as with industrial accidents. Uh, they can also occur in non-accidental um, uh, trauma, such as military combat operations and acts of uh, terrorism. Examples of industrial accidents include explosions from coal mines, fertilizer, chemical plants, uh, firework factories. Um, here's an example from uh, uh, the city of West, in Texas, uh, in uh, 2013. Uh, this was actually a uh, fertilizer plant uh, exploding after catching fire in uh, April 2013. Uh, 14 were killed, uh, 70 houses three schools and uh, a senior citizens home were virtually destroyed uh, in the blast and uh, the allegation was that the company was holding a stock of 270 tons of ammonium nitrate which is the same highly volatile explosive chemical compound that was uh, used in the Oklahoma City uh, federal building bombing um, so an example of an industrial accident they said these also will occur in military combat operations uh, from high velocity conventional weapons, landmines, and improvised explosive devices, otherwise known as IEDs. So um, there are over 6,000, uh, I'm sorry, 16,000 uh, IED attacks uh, annually uh, in Afghanistan uh, by the time of this uh, writing of these slides. Um, U.S. casualties since 2001 uh, totaled the number shown here, 6,800 deaths, over 50,000 wounded, and over 1,500 amputations. So in Afghanistan, uh, these are the uh, injuries uh, seen. Um, as you can see, uh, IEDs uh, clearly lead the list, um, and this is from uh, 2009 to uh, 2011. So IEDs, unfortunately, are not confine, confined to combat zones. They are the weapon of choice for insurgents, terrorists, and um, other violent uh, extremists. Uh, they're inexpensive. They're low-tech. You can get the materials readily, uh, easily, and um, they're easily transported and concealed. Uh, and they can be um, detonated remotely. So there's an average of over 260 IED incidents a month uh, in 2010 globally, and that doesn't include uh, Iraq and uh, Afgan Afghanistan. So um, this is a uh, common form of blast injury that will be seen. Um, unfortunately, IEDs, uh, essentially these are bombs that help to promote the terrorist agenda by causing fear and chaos amongst a targeted population. Um, they maximize uh, casualties, they maximize uh, lethality, and EMS will easily be overwhelmed with sheer numbers and magnitude of uh, wounding. 
So here's an example from the uh, Boston Marathon at the finish line in uh, 2013. Uh, three were killed and over 200 injured um, from uh, uh, bomb devices. Here's an example of uh, London in uh, 2005. Uh, four bombs, three were aboard uh, uh, London underground trains and one on a double-decker uh, double bus. Uh, 52 civilians and four uh, terrorists were killed, over 700 injured, and these were homemade uh, organic peroxide-based uh, devices causing this. Madrid 2004, uh, 10 IEDs exploded uh, near simultaneously aboard four trains during a morning rush hour, 191 killed, over 1,800 wounded. So, unfortunately, um, there's been a five-fold increase in worldwide terrorism deaths since 2000. In 2013, there were nearly 10,000 terrorist attacks in 87 countries, representing a 63% increase uh, from 2012 to 2013, and bombings are the most common method of attack. So, unfortunately, this is something which uh, has previously been known mostly to the uh, a conventional battlefield and now um, this has uh, become something that has hit civilian centers uh, in places um, otherwise uh, not engaged in any formal combat. So um, I'm going to pause there and uh, we will uh, start talking about uh, actual um, blast wave mechanics and uh, primary blast wave injury in the next uh, uh, section of the lecture. Thank you.